Last year I made a video on my thoughts on Clipper firmware and why it had become my favorite 3D printer firmware. One of the features I mentioned was Clipper's ability to use multiple boards or MCUs. The example I gave was if someone was building a 3D printer that required seven stepper motor drivers, but you only had two boards that allowed for four drivers on each. Well, with Clipper, you can use both of those boards together without any issue. Now that is a cool feature, but it is just the tip of the iceberg. And thanks to toolhead boards, there is a lot more that we can do. After about a year of procrastination, I finally dove head first into using one of these specialized boards over CAN bus, and wow, was it quite the journey. So in today's video, we will be diving into toolhead boards for Clipper using CAN bus. We will go over the why and the how as we install the Big Tree Tech EBB36 onto my Mercury 1.1 printer. There is a lot to cover in this video, so I will have timestamps down below if you want to jump around as needed. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for PCB fabrication, 3D printing, and CNC services. Their 3D printing services include everything from FDM, SLA, SLS, and even SLM technologies. I tested out both their nylon SLS as well as aluminum SLM printing and was blown away by the results. For PCB fabrications, they offer both bare and populated boards. They even have a section for open source community projects for quickly sharing designs. Links are in the description below so that you can find out more and check out all that they have to offer. Let's quickly touch on the benefits of toolhead boards. These small boards are often designed in the footprint of a NEMA 17 or NEMA 14 36mm stepper motor, allowing them to easily be mounted. Similar to a breakout board, they clean up your toolhead's wiring by having all the wires from your toolhead go to that board instead of running them all the way down to your main controller. This makes upgrading or swapping out parts on the toolhead a much simpler process. Unlike breakout boards, these small boards also have their own MCU, which basically makes them miniature versions of the larger board you have controlling the rest of your printer. This also means that they can add additional functionality to your printer. In the case of the EBB36, we have a TMC2209 driver for the extruder motor, an accelerometer for input shaping, RGB, end stop, I2C, a probe or servo, thermistor, two fans, and heater connections. Being able to run input shaping without having to connect and disconnect my little portable input shaper is really nice, especially when I'm moving printers around so often. These toolhead boards also only require a few wires to be ran down to your Pi or to your CAN bus board, which makes the printer's wiring overall much neater. For communication, these boards are typically using CAN bus or controller area network. Some boards like the Big Tree Tech ABB boards can be ran over USB. However, it would require you to run an additional power and ground wire so that you can power the electronics on your toolhead, and it also means that you can't daisy chain the boards together like you can do with CAN bus. For the sake of this video, we are focusing exclusively on CAN bus. For a quick dive into CAN communication, it was first developed in 1986 by Bosch and is the standard today used in vehicles, boats, and planes. CAN bus uses two wires to communicate, which are CAN high and CAN low. Two additional wires are used for 3D printing toolboards, which are your voltage and ground. CAN bus is durable, reliable, and efficient, and has no problem being ran multiple lengths longer than you'll ever need for any of your 3D printers. CAN bus must be terminated using a 120 ohm resistor, which comes standard on the Big Tree Tech EBB boards. So what do we need to make this happen? Well, the first is a printer running Clipper firmware. Since we're going to be using multiple MCUs, this is a requirement. Second, we need a way to communicate over CAN bus, and for this there are a few options. The first is a CAN hat for your Raspberry Pi. The most commonly recommended one I could find is the Waveshare RS485. This is roughly a $15 board, which will connect to the GPIO pins of your Pi, giving you CAN communications. The second, and what I'm using for this video, is a USB to CAN adapter. Like the name implies, this board will take in USB from your Pi, or in my case the Manta M8P, and give you CAN. The last option with some 3D printer controllers is CAN bus bridge. Boards like the Pico, Octopus Pro, and newer Manta M8P boards have the ability to use CAN without the need for a USB or hat adapter. Additionally, you will need a CAN toolhead board. Big Tree Tech has the EBB36, the EBB42, and their recently released EBB Stealth Burner board. We will be using the EBB36 in this video. 
The only other things you will need is a USB cable if like me you are using one of the USB to CAN adapter boards and the actual wire that you'll be using for your CAN connection. I'm using CAN bus wire that was sent to me from 3DO last month, but I've also seen Chainflex from iGUS Recommended, and I've seen others creating some of their own wires. For the CAN data wires, which are CAN high and CAN low, what I've seen recommended is 26 gauge wire, and you'll want the CAN wires to be twisted. For the voltage and ground wires, that will depend on your specific setup and your needs, but 20 gauge is what I've seen recommended, and that's what I believe comes standard in the 3DO wire. The first thing that we need to do is get the USB to CAN or U2C board hooked up. For this, we will take a USB cable and plug it into our Pi or Pi alternative, and the other end will go into our U2C board. The U2C board should actually be flashed from the factory and not really require you to do much of anything with them. However, I have a 2.1 board and I've seen online that there are a handful of 2.1 boards that were flashed incorrectly from the factory. So I'm going to go through the process of reflashing the board to make sure that the firmware on there is correct. To do this, we will put the U2C into DFU mode. Unplug the board, then hold down the boot button on the board while you plug it back in. Next, we will download the zip file that I have linked in the description and unzip the bin file within. We will need to place this bin file on the root of our Raspberry Pi using FTP. I'm using FileZilla because it's what I have installed, but you can use any FTP client. The host will be your Clipper IP, and the username and password will match your SSH credentials. For Raspberry Pi, the default is username Pi, password Raspberry, and for the CB1, which is what I'm using, the username default is BQ, and the password default is BQ. The port will be 22. Once you connect, drag the bin file into the root directory. Next, SSH into your Pi. On Mac, I'm just using Terminal, but on Windows, I typically prefer PuTTY. All commands that I enter into the terminal will be in the description down below. I'll also have the text on screen. Some of the simpler ones I will read off as I go over them, but some of them are quite complex and I don't want to be just spelling things out for the entirety of this video. From the terminal type dfu-util space dash l and hit enter. You should see the U2C listed in DFU mode. If you do not, you will need to try unplugging your board and putting it into DFU mode again. It took me about 20 to 30 minutes to realize that the issue I was having was with a faulty USB cable. So if you are not able to see it in DFU mode, and it's just not working, try a different USB cable because that could be your issue. Once you see it listed in DFU mode, enter the command on screen and hit enter to reflash the U2C board. This should be a fairly quick process. And after the reflash, I recommend plugging the U2C board back in, this time not in DFU mode. Next, we need to get our CAN network set up. Enter the sudo nano command on screen to create and open the can0 file. If there is any text in that file, you will want to delete it all and then paste the four lines of text that I have on screen. Once pasted, hit Control S to save the file and Control X to exit. Then type sudo reboot to restart your Pi. Once the Pi restarts, SSH in again and enter ip-s link show can0. What we want to see is the state showing up. Also, to verify that our reflashing worked and the U2C is functioning as it should be, enter the Clippy command I have on screen. At this point, it should say that no UUIDs were found, which is fine, and it verifies that it's working as it should be. If for some reason the U2C was not reflashed correctly, instead of it saying no UUIDs or zero UUIDs were found, it will throw some sort of an error instead. Now we are going to be installing CANBoot on our EBB36 toolhead. CANBoot will allow us to update the firmware on our toolhead board over CAN bus instead of having to hook it up to USB again later on, which will just be really handy and sort of help to future-proof everything. For this, we can either use the USB cable that our U2C is currently connected to, or we can grab a secondary USB cable to go into our Pi. Before we connect our toolhead board, we need to install a jumper cap that will allow us to give it power over USB, in addition to this, we will need to put the EBB36 board into DFU mode. Just like with the U2C, hold down the boot button while plugging in the USB cable. I had a hard time reaching the boot button on the EBB36 with my finger, so you might need a small tool to help with pressing that down. If you are not still connected, SSH back into your Pi and enter git clone followed by the CANBoot URL to clone the CANBoot repository. Then CD into the CANBoot directory and enter make menu config to pull up the can boot configuration menu. Depending on the version of the EBB, you may have a different MCU, but for the 1.2, it is an STM32, specifically the G0B1. 
The rest of the settings for the EBB boards should be the exact same, which are a clock reference of eight, CAN bus on PB0, PB1, eight for the offset and 500K for the baud rate to match the network file that we created. Also make sure that support bootloader entry on rapid double click is selected. Then press Q to exit and Y to confirm. Then enter make clean followed by make to build the can boot bin file. Once that completes, enter LS USB and what we should see is our EBB board listed in DFU mode. If that's not the case, make sure that your power jumper is set and that you held down the boot button when connecting. And once again, make sure that your USB cable is not faulty. Once confirmed, enter the command on screen to flash the board. As long as you see file downloaded successfully, you can ignore any error after that. Unplug your U2C and your EBB board. Now we are going to be wiring the boards together over CAN. For the U2C, we will have ground and 24 volts coming from our PSU into the screw down terminals. We will also need our USB cable connected from the Pi to the U2C. For the CAN wires, from what I've seen, there's not exactly a standard pinout. And on the EBB36 and on the U2C, the voltage and CAN high locations were swapped. So to prevent damaging everything, what I recommend doing is flipping over your board and looking at the pins on the bottom. So you can see H for high, L for low, ground and voltage, and make sure that the pins that you are connecting uh, at the EBB36 are aligning with the pins that you're connecting on your U2C. For the tool headboard, you can mount it to the backside of your stepper motor and start shortening everything. However, before you do that, I highly recommend just hooking up the four CAN wires and making sure that the communication between the U2C and the EBB is working as it should be. Other than connecting the four CAN wires, you'll need to install a jumper on both the U2C and the EBB where it says 120R. This is a requirement for the CAN bus to operate correctly and failing to do so will not allow the boards to communicate with each other. Now we are ready for the final configuration steps. Back in your SSH terminal with everything hooked up, type in the on-screen Clippy command. This will search for any devices on your CAN bus network and it will display its unique UUID and show its application as CAN boot. If it still says zero UUIDs found, you'll need to go back and make sure you've got the jumper set correctly and that your wiring is also correct. When the UUID is displayed, you will then CD into the clipper directory and run make menu config. You will use the same settings you previously used in the can boot make menu, then hit Q to exit and Y to confirm. Then run make clean and make to build the clipper.bin file. Lastly, run the on-screen Python can boot command to flash the firmware over can. When you query the can bus UUID again, it will display that UUID, but it will say clipper as the application, letting us know that we are ready to rock and roll. At this point, all that you need to do is update your printer.cfg file. Big Tree Tech provides .cfg files for their can boards, which makes this pretty simple. The process is copying all the text in their .cfg file for your board and then creating that file in Fluid or Mainsail where you will paste all of the copied text. You will then need to comment out the USB communication that they have set by default and uncomment the CAN line along with entering in the UUID that was displayed in Terminal. In your printer.cfg file, you will need to include the CAN bus config file so that you have access to all of its pins. Then just like when you built your original config file, you'll swap out pin IDs as necessary to use the pins on the EBB board. After verifying that all the hardware you connected to the CAN bus board is working as it should be, you're good to go. I've been running this setup for the last week or two and I've really been enjoying the much cleaner wiring with the CAN bus board and again having the ADXL built into the board on the tool head instead of having to hook and unhook everything as I move this printer around from rigid tabletop to less rigid tabletop has been a really nice addition. This is definitely what I would consider an advanced mod and you will absolutely want to make sure that you feel at least fairly comfortable with Clipper and Clipper firmware and playing around with the config files before you dive in and attempt to add CAN to your printer. I also highly recommend backing up your initial config file in case you make a change and something gets screwed up and you need to revert back to that original working file. The first time I ran through this process, it took me somewhere between four to six hours. And the reason for that was because information was scarce, it wasn't matching up, things didn't make sense, and there were things all over the place. Once I figured out what the heck I was doing, found instructions that made sense, and learned from just failing as far as what did not work, I was able to do this again from A to Z in under an hour. 
By far the most helpful resource I found is the Mazer GitHub that has a ton of very clear information about a majority of the CAN bus tool boards out there. It isn't perfect due to revisions coming out for these boards, but had I found this website in the beginning, it would have cut my time and frustration in half. For anyone interested in installing CAN bus, I will have this linked down below and I highly recommend using this as your initial resource because again, I think it will save you a ton of time and frustration. CAN bus is awesome, but I really hope that the process gets simplified down a bit more and a lot of that just again comes down to better documentation, which is on the manufacturers. Now Big Tree Tech does provide some documentation for the EVB36 and the U2C, but I can guarantee you that from a beginner's perspective going from A to Z, there are a lot of gaps that someone that hasn't done this before will not be able to fill in on their own. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you now feel more confident in at least understanding the process of setting up CAN bus on your Clippard 3D printer. And if you are in the process of installing it, perhaps something in here helped you complete that successfully. If so, please let me know in the comments down below. As always, if you do have any questions, let me know and I will do my absolute best to answer those questions. I am by no means a CAN bus expert. Again, I grinded my teeth through all of this. It was not a simple thing to do, but I came out on the other side very happy with the end result and I feel much more confident in my ability to set up CAN bus now. And so hopefully the tips and tricks and just things I've outlined in this video will help some of you do the exact same thing. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.